Oh my goodness, we have two guys who are like battling a cold and a cough. Oh, this is going to be terrible. We're going to have to like, oh, we're going to have to do all these edits and stuff. Yeah, it's going to sound great. Oh, it's going to be great. My name is Cam Roberts. Thank you for listening. I am here with a, a fantastic gentleman from New York. We're going to get right into it today with Adam Pichet. Adam, how are you today? I'm good, man. Hey, I just want to say before we really go down any rabbit holes, uh, thanks for having me. And, uh, you know, big congratulations to you with Laser Line. You got the the, uh, the two Facebook rooms. You got the, the Striping Academy. You know, you're doing you're doing a lot. You got the podcast. And for those that don't know, you just spoke recently at NPE, which is uh, awesome. So congratulations on all that, man. I don't know how you find the time to, to do it all, man. But it is it is awesome. I'm a big fan. Well, thanks. Now you just made me really nervous, but I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. I'm supposed to be interviewing you here, but you know what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I figured cool. I'd give you some love, man. You know, you deserve it. Oh man, you're the best. Well, thanks for coming on. Yeah, this is my fault. I was very sick last week, uh, so I canceled a couple times. I shot my voice. So this has been a long time coming, this one, you and I. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. I, I shaved again for like the third time for you after you blew me off twice. I was like, oh my God, I don't think he's interested. Unbelievable. Is it something I said? Yeah. Maybe it's me. It's not like, you, no. it's me. It's not you, it's me. <laughs> I, was, oh my God. I was pacing up and down the floor. I might have lost some sleep sleep because of you but no nah, man it's uh, it's good we're both healthy we're both here you battled your snowstorm so <laughs> you got that out the way which is awesome man it's uh, it's a tough gig the snow it really is snow is brutal I, maybe we'll talk about that a little bit here too for sure yeah but, absolutely um so i think you're you're fascinating because i guarantee you if anyone is in asphalt maintenance and on instagram they know who your company is because like when i started that you're one of the first companies i saw prestige seal coating is all over the gram all over other like high quality stuff too so this is the man behind well half of the half of the brothers behind yeah, yeah, yeah. prestige yeah. seal coating in uh remind me which part of new york again it's uh just outside of albany new york okay right on yeah let's get into it brother because like your stuff is amazing right, like i i think you're a <laughs> you're a gem on many levels that not enough people know about so i want to get right uh, into it has prestige been prestige has been going on for like 20 years yeah, yeah, yep. I, I believe I was I was still in high school. I think the startup year is 2000. I tried finding the DBA because I thought it'd be cool to like post it and see it. Yeah. And honestly, I couldn't I couldn't find it. We LLC'd in, I believe, I'm going to say 05, but I'll be honest with you. I'm terrible with the time. I'm terrible with the years. So anytime I say a year, it could be two years prior or two years yeah. after because it's just it's, it's like grind, Groundhog's Day when you live this life because it's the same thing over and over. It's the same customers over and over. So every like third year looks the same kind of. So, but yeah, it's been, it's been a while, man. It's been a, uh, it's been a really long uh, journey, but it's been a, it's been a hell of a good time, man. We've had a really, uh, a really good time doing it. I, I couldn't picture myself doing uh, anything else, you know, and obviously it wasn't that way in the beginning, you know, it kind of starts off. It's more of a, a hobby, a summer gig, but you get really good at it and the better you get at something, you know, you, the passion grows and you just want to keep learning and getting better. And as that goes on, it honestly, it becomes, it becomes more fun, you know? So it's, uh, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a long time. So whose idea was it? Was it you and your brother? You guys started together right away? No, no, I, I had nothing to do with it. Uh, my brother started it. He had worked with, uh, another company out West in New York. And I, I, I always mean to ask him the name of the company and where exactly he was, but he worked two summers with a different company in New York and kind of learned it that way. And then was like, well, geez, I, you know, maybe I'll just start it up my own. And I was still in high school for maybe the first year, year and a half, somewhere in there and coming out of high school. But in the beginning, I would just fill in, you know, if, if one of his friends didn't show up, because when he first started out, it was just his good buddies would come in. There'd be two of them, three of them, whatever it was. And if one of them didn't come in or didn't show up, because, you know, these guys were still in the early 20s. So it wasn't like you weren't showing up because you were studying real hard. You you went out that night, you were hung over, you were puking at, at, at 5, 6 a.m. And you weren't making it in that day. So I was available. So I would fill in and I've always been a hard worker. So, you know, I started off just running the weed whacker, sweeping dirt, blowing, basically whatever these guys didn't want to do. I, I couldn't tell you how many buckets I carried from the road to the top of a driveway in those early years. And uh, I didn't get more involved like in a serious full-time role till maybe – two years in give or take some somewhere in there but yeah i'm i'm, I'm very thankful for uh 
him starting it off because I, I am a very talented guy. But if it wasn't for this, I might be bagging groceries. I don't, I don't really, I don't really know. Hey, you, you, you don't know. So I'm very thankful. I always stay humble and, and modest because uh, uh, honestly, if it wasn't for him starting the company, I don't really know what I would be doing. And, and it's opened a lot of doors for me. You know, I mean, I do all the social media and everything internet related, and that's probably something, an avenue I never would have been able to go down because I would have just been punching the clock for somebody else. You know, the marketing and branding probably would have had nothing to do with it. So it's allowed me to be able to do a lot of things that I enjoy and love that are tied to the business, but, and kind of outside of that. So it's, uh, that's kind of how it's gone and that's how it, uh, it's, it's been, but I mean, obviously he's still heavily involved. I'm in, uh, when we do residential driveways, I'm in one truck, he's in the other, which has been great. And uh, it's really helped with quality control because you're either going to be working with the owner or you're working with his brother. And we both do things the same uh, the same way. So it's uh, it's it's been really good for our growth and uh, our again, our quality control. And uh, no, I mean, we're still both uh, rocking out. You know, family businesses aren't always easy, but you can uh, you can make it work, you know, yeah. but it does. It's like any other relationship. It takes work. It takes time. It takes compromise. And uh, but if you can make it work, I promise you it's absolutely worth it. Yeah. Well said, man. Well, one thing that stands out, like if you didn't know anything about prestige, like like I said, you go on the Instagram. The stuff's amazing. The quality speaks for itself, brother. Like it's it's very obvious like that there's a lot of attention to details put into what you guys do. And I think, I mean, that's naturally going to happen over like tw literally 20 years anyways. Like if you do anything for 20 years, you're going to put a lot of detail into it. But you guys, and I know I've, I've spoken with you about this before, um, like you have something that I think a lot of companies want to have. My comp I want my company to be like Prestige because you guys have everything just so dialed in. Like explain to me how that has started. Cause I'm guessing when you're in the high school days when you're filling in, you know, quality isn't as big of a concern, you know, or, or if it is, you still don't have the processes to do it. How has your process changed over like 20 years? Yeah. That's yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. And you, and you said it in the beginning, you're still, you're still learning. So you're trying your best, but the end result product may not be as good, but you know, you can't set the bar any higher than what you're capable of. You know, you can always achieve and try to be better, but your best on that day is your best. So even if I go back and say the best I did five years ago, I could probably do better today yeah. or at least be, do more, more efficient. But I, I think the advantage we have, and I, I feel bad for young, some of the younger guys just starting out because for the first really 10 years of our career, we just focused on the work, right? Like, Social media wasn't really a thing, at least not with our company. We weren't doing it. And, and honestly, there wasn't Google reviews. There wasn't Facebook reviews. So like you, I feel like it was easier to make mistakes back then than it is now because there's not as much scrutiny. Not, there's not a million eyes on it. So for the first 10 years, we just focused on driveways. Like the crazy thing is, is people always ask, like, well, how did you get so good at driveways or how are you so efficient? Because we didn't really do anything else. So we didn't start spraying sealer till probably our 12th or 13th year season in. We bought a uh, another used unit. It happened to come with a spray set up. And, you know, at first I was really worried about the quality control of it, the aspect of it. I'm, I'm a bit of a control freak in, in a healthy way, only because like, I'm like, geez, well, how much sealer is coming out the wand? Is it equivalent to putting down a broom? How do I know? There's it's It sounds silly, but if you've never done it, you've never done it. So for those first 10 years, dude, we were just brooming driveways every single day, Monday through, we were probably brooming driveways Saturdays. And we didn't do a lot of commercial stuff. The, the main commercial lots we did was stuff that was broomable. So, you know, maybe 15,000 square feet, give or take, might have been a massive job to take on back then and broom it. And maybe that we weren't, even, we might not have even been doing ones that big, but, you know, small diners, restaurants, stuff like that, those type parking lots, we were uh, brooming. We were doing some firehouses back then, but our, our focus, because we weren't trying to be everything to everyone and everywhere, we kept it really simple. And we said, we're just driveway seal coaters. Like we're just going to do driveways. Like we weren't worried about, you know, patchwork and, and, and striping. We didn't stripe anything for ourselves. Uh, we subbed out all our striping up until I think five, six years ago, the main guy we subbed out work to was really, really busy. He stripes right behind a lot of the pavers in the area. And he just couldn't get to our small work. And he's like, dude, just do it yourself. Like I'll help you. It's not a big deal. I'll get you set up. Like I'll help you. I'll tell you what you need, what you don't need. And he was the one who pushed us 
to do it because we honestly never thought we were even going to do that because we didn't think we'd find the time. But yeah, we just, we started off really simple. And when you focus just in one area and trying not to be everything to everybody, it makes it a lot easier. So like, you know, if you guys just, I mean, I know you predominantly do the striping. So you guys focus on that, but like, if you were also trying to do seal coating and paving and patching and this, it gets, it gets crazy. It can get out of control and maybe you can supply, maybe you can do all those things, but you don't do any of them really, really well. So my advice to anyone is focus on what you do well, do that until you've got it so down that now it's either time to expand and do more of that or to branch out because what you've already been doing is kind of running itself. Like it's self-explanatory. Like I could go out and seal a driveway right now by myself, like half and a half in a coma, like <laughs> with, with one shoe on and like, I'm, I'm going to be fine. Like it's, it's going to, it's going to be okay. Like, I don't, I don't know. I probably sealed 20. I'm somewhere in the range. If I had a ballpark at 25, 30,000 driveways, I bet I've sealed in my Dude. entire career it, all, all by hand. Yeah. So like, eh, there's nothing new out there. Like, and it really isn't, we still make mistakes. I'm not saying we're perfect, but like, there's nothing to worry about, but yeah, we, we just focused in those early years, uh, just doing the driveways. And when you're doing it, even if you weren't trying to get better, it's kind of, like you said, it's going to happen naturally on its own anyway, but we never, we never settled. We were always looking for better ways. We were always looking to make it less labor intensive and to save time and to cut time because in this line of work, it's a short season. And if you can fit in one extra job a day, that over time, five years, 10 years, 15 years, it's a huge, it's a huge difference. I mean, and now we do, you know, ridiculous amounts a day per truck, but it all started with that same process of doing that one or two a day or four or five a day. We just improved it and perfected it over a longer period of time. And um, it's, it's, it's worked to our advantage and it's allowed us to do what we do and to service a lot of, a lot of people, you know, in a short amount of time. Yeah, man, I just, you're speaking to my soul here because yeah, I call I'm it, trying to get right in there. Adam, I call it shiny object syndrome. And I think okay. I believe the overwhelming majority of like newer businesses, especially have it in exactly what you just said. So on my line of work, it's you start striping because it's a low barrier to entry. And then the first person that you really like as a commercial client asks you to do some seal coating and you're like, oh, perfect. I'll just jump in and do that. Was, yeah. was it hard for you guys to do 12 years with no spring or were you guys just so relentlessly dedicated to getting the operations dialed in? Like, was it hard to say no to those things? No, you know, in all reality, our area has a, has a lot of competition. So the yeah. bigger parking lots and the stuff that we weren't really capable of doing, we weren't really too concerned about. We kind of knew what our niche was and we stuck with it until we what what really changed our company was when we stopped parking the truck out in front of my parents house stashing all the equipment in their in their garage like the neighbors were great like we still do their driveways to this day for a very very discounted price because nobody wants to see a, a, a sealer truck in front of the house but when we finally got our shop we've been there 14 15 years give or take and once we got there and then we got the bulk tank because you got to remember, we our first truck only had a 300-gallon tank. So you're only going to get X amount of square feet out of a 300-gallon tank. So even if we were able to spray out of that, we weren't going to get a whole lot done without back and forth trips, back and forth trips. And at the time, we were going maybe 30, 30 minutes away, 35 minutes mm -hmm. away to get sealer, give or take. And so there was a lot of things where it just – it wasn't really necessary to be that big – without solving a lot of other problems that we weren't really ready to solve. And we weren't in any rush because we, we were making great money and everybody thinks, I think one of the biggest misconceptions is when you look at us and you think success, people equate it with, I got to have 15 trucks. I got to have 12 employees. I got to have all this stuff going on. We were three guys and we were out producing the majority of the area with just one truck guys that maybe had two trucks or been doing it 20 years. And we were doing it just out of that. So we weren't, we didn't ever really felt pressure to grow and to be that big too quick. But once we got the yard and we worked out a deal uh, at the time it was Copeland uh, Copeland Coatings is been making sealer since 19. I'll get it wrong. It's either 47 or 57. Uh, we worked out a deal with them. We got a bulk tank through them. And that's when we got the second truck, put that together, brought in more guys. And that's when we started getting a little more heavily involved. And that was because of the relationship with uh, 
with that manufacturer that we worked out and having material on the ready. And once we could kind of control that a little better, it opened up doors for a lot. And Craftco bought them out uh, four or five years ago, but kept a lot of the guys on. So we have an amazing relationship with all the men and the women out there, which is, which is huge because it it, it works to, I mean, it's obviously not the only reason we're nice to them and and friendly, but it does, it works to your advantage. You know, we get, we get some things that work our way that maybe some other people it's not working out that way. And it's because my brother has a really good relationship with him. I mean, he buys those guys lunch out there an unbelievable amount of Fridays, you know, it's because we appreciate what they do without them. We don't have a product. So like you have to, but yeah, once, once we got that yard, got that bulk tank, got that second truck, that's when we kind of really said, okay, we can take on bigger work. And uh, one of the, re- one of the ways we really got into the commercial game is uh, we're really good at night work because of the efficiency. A lot of guys steer clear at night work. They're, they're afraid of it. They've, they go off a lot of the stories and the rumors, or maybe they've had a bad experience. And I will say all materials different. So there are some materials that don't want to dry overnight. Ours just was never one of them. So having sealer at the yard on the ready, having the two trucks, whether we were spraying or brooming, we could now bring more sealer to a job, be more efficient. And uh, because we spent so much time brooming and brooming and brooming, yeah. that transition into uh, parking lots, even if we were spraying, we cut in curbs so fast and flawless. It'll, it'll, it'll make your head spin, man. We're pretty, we're pretty quick and efficient. So we can cut out a parking lot really quickly and spray in and fill in the middle in no time. And so we kind of just looked for areas where people weren't and kind of went there. So once we did get into that commercial stuff, that, that night work was a big opening for us because a lot of places don't want to close down. They don't want to shut down. They don't want to split the lot in two. They don't want to hear about complaints from their customers because they couldn't get their favorite parking spot. Like it's, it's all of that. So we kind of just looked for areas where we, you know, felt we could fill in really, really well where others weren't. And, and, you know, but again, it all started from that process of that driveway and getting better and branching off from that and really mastering, like we mastered everything. Like, and it sounds silly, but like a weed whacker, a blower, believe me, there's right ways to weed whack. There's right ways to blow. You, you put a new guy on a driveway and up by the house has got two retaining walls and a little overhang above the garage door. Dude, you can watch him blow dirt from one side to the other for 15, 20 minutes, spinning around. But it's like, like, there's ways to get in and out of every situation faster. And we just, we mastered one piece of equipment at a time. And once we couldn't do anything else with it or get any more productivity out of it, was when we kind of just split the formula and and created another one and then created another one and, and and did the same thing. But we knew it's a lot easier to, you know, get a second truck rolling when you have the entire process down versus if we went into trying to build a second truck our fourth, fifth year in, it might not have worked out as well because we didn't have the quality down yet. When you're trying to punch that quantity without the quality behind it, dude, it doesn't it doesn't end well. Man, like you 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 breathe, you breathe sincerity in what you do, right? Like it's so obvious. You're obviously a high energy guy. Um, oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah. I don't know if I don't know if anyone the, could tell the, that. The frequency, the yeah. frequency's up here, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I can't, I can't really bring it down. No, you know, no, don't get, bring it down. You're no, uh, you get me in the wrong circles. They're like, oh, he has grandiose ideologies, and they start labeling no. me. I got a folder this thick about me, dude. I, it is what it is, man. God made me this way. My parents nurtured me. My brothers tolerated me for thirty nine years. So it's uh, this is who I am, I man. Love I, that's that's, I love that's all you got. No, I just it's it's crazy because like yeah, you're you're obviously this is what you do you live and breathe this 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 is what you've been doing basically since high school but like i just i see the high energy and the high like the go 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 and usually what that means adam usually what that means when people are like you and they're high high energy those are the people who do get easily distracted who want to do the things who like exactly like we were just talking about the first commercial job they get like yeah we got to go into that market now but you were you somehow blended your your tenacity with like awareness of your market and realizing that it would be a mistake to just go try and do everything, but also your patience. Like most guys do not want to brush driveways for 12 years, man. That's, that's like, you're a rare breed. Um, yeah. Kudos to you and your discipline. I'm, I mean it like that's, that's hard to do. Yeah. I've only been in business for like five, five, six years now. And like, I struggle with it too. Like I want to do more. I want to bring in more services, mostly because we want to help people, but sometimes that's not the answer. Right. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I think, and it's, and again, I know I have different views than probably a lot of people out there now, and I can only speak on what worked for us. What worked for us yeah. may not work for anybody else, but we know, uh, my brother knows a lot of pavers in this area and uh, and seal coders and whatnot. And, you know, you kind of learn from others and, and we know, like, like there's guys that'll tell you there's more money in patchwork than there is paving driveways. Right. Like it's it's just one of those things that again everybody thinks you got you got you got to have fifteen trucks out here and, and you don't you just have to be really really good at a service you enjoy uh, supplying to customers and and be okay with that like I, honestly if we if we never striped anything I would have been okay with that we didn't stripe anything forever long I actually really enjoy it. I was really panicked by it in the beginning. So I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to screw this up. Sure. But then once you pull that trigger for the first time, you're like, yeah, you're like, I got this. Yeah. And then you do everything and you go. And then you get to that first radius and it's very, very humbling. And you're like, all right, I got to put the, I got to put the gun by the back tire. But not only that, I, I got to test fire that gun because for whatever reason, the width of the line changes, even though I've kept the thing perfectly parallel. And like, I had a tape mark on the arm. So I'm like, dude, I know that's where I had it, but I'm like, I got to lift it up a little bit. So like, yeah, it, it's just, it's one of those things that like, like you said, just, just be okay. You have to be okay with where you're at. And I think that's the biggest thing. Like, I think it's very easy to get yourself in trouble out here. I think mm -hmm. a lot of people, I don't know. You really got to watch your overhead. And it's, it's, it's unfortunate that the equipment costs what it does today. And again, one of the areas we took, and it's not for everybody, we bought all used equipment. We've, we've never had a brand new sealer tank. Um, all of our work trucks were used and it's not an easy route. You got to have, in order to go that way, you got to have a really good network. You got to have mechanics. You got to have fabricators. Some of it's in-house. Um, you know, the one nice thing is it's funny. My brother, all the years that they spent early on in bars, he always used to joke. He's like, dude, I could have bought a bar. And like, so I know he always just feel like he threw money away, but he knows my mom calls him the mayor. He knows everybody in this area. So like, if we need tires, dude, we got a guy. If we need something done under the hood, we got a guy. Yeah. Well, then we could do some in house, the more structural stuff we, we, we sub out. Cause it's just not safe. You don't, you don't want to see my stick welds on something structural going down the road at 65. I don't have a lot of faith in that, but like, yeah, you got to be okay with being small, it's always good. Always have your eyes down the road and wanting to be better and wanting to be bigger. But like, if you're not fully getting out what you already have, why add more? Why add more? Don't add, and again, it, this is what worked for us. I'm not deterring anybody from buying shiny objects and doing this, but you gotta understand, especially in a seasonal gig, when you carry that truck payment and that equipment payment into the winter and you're not plowing or you don't really have plowing figured out, or your contracts aren't the greatest, it's not easy to float all that. And then starting up every year when that first delivery of sealer comes and, and, and getting all the equipment ready and the insurance and all that stuff, it adds, it adds up. So when you're smaller and you're starting out, learn the ins and outs of everything. Learn it. Like we, everything we did, we did in house. Like we figured it out. There weren't coaches then. YouTube wasn't big then. There was nobody to talk to. I couldn't say, Cam, I got to take your academy, dude, because I don't know what I'm doing striping. Like I need to know the business end. You know it. Like there was none of that. So, like, we learned everything the old way, scientific method, trial and error, bump your head off the wall. Let's let's regroup, not focus on it. We failed. We failed forward faster than anybody else because we did more volume. So we were able to do that and we just picked ourselves back up. You couldn't get hung up on a failure because tomorrow's another day. There's 10 new customers. They don't know you failed yesterday. You know, maybe now today they do because Karen leaves a one-star review because, you know, yeah, you know, because they're out there. But you know, you can do everything right, you're gonna get a one-star review in this world. But yeah, be you gotta be okay with where you're at. And just getting the most out of it before you branch out. Because honestly, whether you've got a tote, a 300-gallon plastic tank, a 750-gallon tank, it's bringing material to the job all the same way. No matter what, whether you're brooming or spraying, regardless of how it's coming out of the nozzle or being poured out on the ground, it's all the same. So just get really good at that. Like, yes, the shiny truck looks cool and the custom paint looks cool. But I tell you right now, we could shit can half the stuff we've got at the yard come out in a rusted pickup and do, we're still going to do some damage out here. Like it's one of those things you see the guy, the millionaire that starts over with no money and no contacts yeah. and he can become a millionaire in 30 days. Dude, we could start up a new seal coating company today 
unheard of, no name, not use my name, his prestige. And dude, we'd be back up and running. We'd, we'd be ready to go in five years because you've done it before. So like, just get good and be content with where you're at, but obviously always wanting to get better. Like that's, that's all we're here for, you know, but you don't need half the stuff. And I'm not knocking any vendors out here, manufacturers, but you don't need half the stuff they're selling to get started. You know, if, if your operation you have is holding you back, and you know there's more money out there, then advance. But if you're not getting the most out of what you have, just get stay with that. Stay with that for a while, a year, two, three years, till you really got some surplus money. You really have everything figured out. And, and you know, you know how to run things. And you know, then it makes it a lot easier to bring in new new help, new talent when you've already got things figured out. But yeah, it's don't that's that's my thing. Don't look at social media and think you have to be like all of us. Dude, you didn't see our rookie year. You didn't see our first three years, dude. It was it was the same as yours. It wasn't special. Yeah. Like we just made do with what we had, you know. So it's uh yeah, be okay with being small, man. It's honestly a great place to be in a, in a struggling economy because you can be a little more fluid with your company and your moves and especially your pricing because you don't you don't have to be priced way up here because you don't have the overhead. You're not trying to keep fifteen guys fed. You know your insurance isn't. You know you're not carrying these huge policies, but. Yeah, yeah. I, I be, be okay with being small, man. That's it's, there's nothing wrong with it. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's something I take for granted too. Like everyone goes to YouTube University now. If you want to learn anything about anything, it's all there. It's all online. And that's that's actually what I wanted to ask you about a big part today was um, about social media. A lot, a lot of uh, guys in our industry are still, haven't really come around to embracing it because um, it's still new. Like, let's be real. We feel like it's been around forever, but it hasn't been. Um, and one question I get a lot that I, sometimes I even struggle to answer a little bit. Uh, you know, I feel like I give an okay answer, but I think you would have a better one. A question I get a lot is uh, like, why do you do it? Like, why do you like it, it, people see an attractive video from prestige and they, a business owner might see that, but not immediately equate the value of that or why you're doing it other than it looks cool. So why do you do it? Like your guys' social media <laughs> is fantastic. Yeah. Like you're, you're, yeah. I, I see the engagement on Instagram. It's very high, very high. Why do you do it? You know, it's, it's a good question because it's, it's a lot of work, you know, the, the entire yeah. process, you know, you got it, you got to capture the stuff and I could get so much better content in the field than I do, but I would have to take myself out of the play yeah. and then it's going to put more work on my guys and they, they don't want to watch me film them on a 95 degree day. So like I, I, I do, I do what I can. I get a few photos, but my, <laughs> my main thing in the beginning, it was obviously just to get our name out there and to get some people's attention and to say, Hey, hey, look at us. This is what we do. And I've always been very proud of, of the work, you know, some of it, some of it in the beginning was kind of like an F you to some people, because a lot of people had said, you know, there was a lot of pavers in our area that at the time weren't always the most friendly here and there. And they said, oh, you can't make a living seal coating. You can't just seal coat. So that was, that was always kind of in the back of my mind. And, uh, but yeah, I really just wanted to get us out there and get us be seen by as many people as possible because it does it does bring in work it's obvious it brings in residential customers it brings in commercial um we do really well on social media but i i honestly i enjoy sharing what we do because i think what we do is very rare i i think there's a million people out there that can seal coat a driveway mm -hmm. i don't think there's a million people out there that are as passionate about sealing a driveway as as we are i don't i don't think there's a lot of people that put the effort and the time and, 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 you know, all that into doing into getting the outcome we did. And, and so I really just wanted to share that with as many people as possible. I'm, I'm just really proud of what we've done, what we've built. I mean, you got, I, I never thought in a million years we would be here. I, I knew we would do really well. Uh, once we got out of that, like fourth, fifth year, give or take, I knew, uh, that we were on the right road and we were starting to figure things out. It was getting a little easier. I knew this was going to be, if we kept on the path, that was going to be a long-term thing. So I, I just kind of wanted to continue to share that and to share our journey and to share our growth and to show that like, listen, two brothers who had no previous asphalt maintenance history could grow a company from one truck, no customers, no money, no know-how. Like, you know, we didn't, we just didn't know yeah. into what you see today. And so to be able to share that and to have people see that, and, you know, I never wanted our, our stuff to come off as, uh, 
you know, here and there, I get a little carried away, but only when people call me out, but I never wanted to come out with stuff that looked like arrogant or like that we were better than anybody. I just, I just wanted to show what was possible if you worked hard, stayed consistent and, and stayed focused and, and worked as a team through a long period of time that you can get from A to Z and have fun do have, oh, excuse me, and have fun doing it. And, and so that's, that's all I really wanted to show. And we get a lot of messages and like you, I don't really know how to answer it, but we get a lot of messages and guys are like, Oh man, you really, you really inspired us. I love your content. I love the educational stuff you put out there. And, you know, it's nice to hear that. And I, I, I enjoy hearing it because I remember, I know, first of all, it takes one kind of person to actually admit that to another kind of person to, to private message somebody and say, Hey, I really like what you're doing, man. It's awesome. So like, I know right there that like, you're in it for the same reasons that kind of how we started yeah. and, and carried on. So like when I see that interest, I'm like, all right, man, I'm like, you know, but I never wanted to make it feel that's always my thing. I don't ever want somebody who's just starting out or four or five years in to look at us and think that the only way to be successful in this industry is to acquire what we've acquired. What, what we do isn't going to be for everybody. There's a lot of people that aren't going to want to do what my brother does Monday through Sunday. They're not going to want to do what I do Monday through Sunday. They're not going to want to do what we ask our guys to do. And it's, so it's not going to be for everybody, but you can be just as successful. It literally comes down to as simple as, dude, you only got to make one customer happy at a time. Like that's it. Everybody gets so down the road. It makes it more complicated than it has to be. But dude, all you literally have to do is make that driveway or that parking lot look as good as it can. And that's it. To that one person, you're everything. You know, maybe the last guy they hired, they had a bad experience with, and you're like their knight in shining armor now. You're going to be their go-to guy from now until then. We have, I mean, we have an insane client base of residential customers by now. But, like, we still do driveways that we did 20-some-odd years ago. And I think one of the craziest things that, and they probably don't realize, but, like, when we were first there, we were 18, 19, 20 years old. Yeah. I'll be 40 in April. Yeah. And, like, to be still at the same house, that's a feeling that you can't really express because that right there kind of justifies everything you've done and everything you've worked for to have that same person. Dude, there's a million of us out here in our area. They could call anybody. I guarantee there's five guys cheaper, cheaper in price. Now they're not going to bring the value, you know, but they're, they're going to be cheaper in price, but you know, and they stick with us. So it's, it's, I just wanted to show that it was possible to, you know, if, if you just did everything right or to the best of your abilities, that it will work out because I know in the beginning you feel like you're doing everything right. And you are, and things don't go your way, you know, and, and the truck breaks down or a customer calls you out or hates you for one thing. But I promise you, if you just keep getting better and do what you do, dude, doors will open up doors, doors will open up. I mean, we work with guys. We don't, it sounds horrible. We, we don't really chase work too much anymore. Like our schedule fills up. Like yeah. we work with, we seal for a lot of the good pavers, like the legit ones. We seal for tons of property managers. We seal for guys that acquire a lot, a lot of commercial properties, and they're only going to use us regardless of what the price is because they know what we bring. If they pick a date, it's done Yeah, unless it's raining. So like, it's just, just stick to doing things right and doing right by your customer and right by yourself and, and be honest with yourself on the kind of company you want to build and the culture you want to create and do it's, it can be a great life. Like, but it takes work, but what doesn't, you know, but it's, I, I wouldn't replace it for anything, but yeah, social media, I just wanted to inspire show to work. And, and I think we've done that really, really well. And uh, you know, I've helped a lot of guys along the way that uh, were interested in whatnot. And uh, yeah, it's that, that was it, man. And it's, it is, it's a lot of work, but when you love what you do and you're proud of what you do, why wouldn't you show it off? It's no different than the mom who shows off their kid's birthday party or their dog when it learns a new trick. It's the same thing. You're proud of what you do and you want to share that with the world. Yeah. You know, that's, that's really it. Yeah. It's crazy. And like, you can, you get, you can feel it too in people's work. So in your videos, your marketing, your content, like you, you, you get, you, it's easy to perceive how serious and how much you guys love what you do, which I, I love that. I love, if you can watch a video and actually get the sense of what people feel about it, that's pretty sweet, man. Oh, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a hallmark moment yeah 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 you're stressing me out a little bit because like you know i write notes as we go along just because i'm a scribbler and like i always write yeah. down like parts that i'm like oh this should be a great clip for i should clip this for social media clip this and i've got five so far and uh yeah so yeah. we're running it's cause, it's cause 
I just try. You try. And add, these things add stress to me because I'm like, dude, oh, I don't on. even know. Come after 15 minutes of rambling, I'm like, I don't even know if I answered his question. Oh no, I'm you're like, on point. Yeah. No, no, you're good. Yeah. You're so good. I try, I try to come back around, and then I'm like, in my mind, I'm, I'm talking while trying to think of what your question was, and I'm like, I think Bro, I got it. You've got a vibe. No, don't change. Don't change at all. There's one other thing uh, um, you wrote down that caught my caught my eye as well, and it's definitely something I wanted to talk about too, which was, you can't go. Like I appreciate what you just said. Like. You know, your schedule at this point, literally 20 years, like it, it basically fills itself. And you're not saying that in a, in a pretentious way. Like, I understand, like you have these recurring customers, that story of this house from 20 years ago is just cool. It gives me like chills. I realize we're just sealing driveways, but it's still cool. Oh, so yeah, I understand yeah. that the market is established. The brand is established. The market presence is there, but, um, no, no matter how much, you know, how fast your schedule fills now every year. And, and I'm sure this year it'll, it'll, well, it will be the same. You still need people, Adam. And like, has that been a struggle? Like, tell me about like culture and the people that you and your brother have used. Like, how does prestige do it? Do you get a lot of guys coming back continually through the year? Do you keep guys busy through the winter? Walk me through it. Yeah. So in, in the beginning, it was, uh, my brother's like core group, a few of his really good friends. And then obviously they had things they wanted to pursue, um, so, you know, they went separate ways, you know, one of them owns a, a, a speed shop, the other one's a, a fabricator, you know, they've gone on to just, you know, still coding life term, long term isn't for everybody, you know, so, yeah. so then we brought in, it was me, him, and uh, everyone we've had work for us, we've known, either worked with somewhere else, brought them in, you know, the beauty of this industry is every winter, you kind of get to reinvent yourself. So I've worked with tons of other contractors over the winter, uh, doing partial <coughs> framing, drywall, taping, crime, basically anything inside a commercial building or inside a residential house. And so we picked up a few guys um, along the way, but we've had the same guys with us uh, for the last, I don't know, 15, 15 years, give or take. Um, it's, it's one of those things. I'll be honest with you. I never thought about the word culture until you guys, you guys are big on it. You guys are heavy on it. Believe me, I, I get it. And I never, I don't have it defined to five, six words, but I knew I played sports my whole life. And I knew when I no longer played sports and I didn't have that structure, that culture, those guys that winning around me that, you know, my life wearing a little bit for a, for a year period. So I knew through through the sports I had played and, and that camaraderie. And I knew with working through multiple different contractors over the winter, I kind of knew what I didn't want. It was easier to do it that way, to reverse engineer, because I, I knew I knew who I was as a person. And I knew through all the different people I worked with over the winter, some I really enjoyed it, some I didn't really enjoy it. I always liked the work, but because of a particular person or how they did things, it wasn't enjoyable. So I knew there's it's really three things like nobody wants and i don't know another word for it i won't swear but no nobody wants to work for a dick like nobody got nobody wants to work for an angry guy who's yelling all the time i don't care what he's paying nobody wants to work nobody wants to work for somebody who's cheap and nobody wants to work for somebody who's unorganized those are like my three deal breakers <laughs> those, those are, are perfect yeah exactly yeah like yeah. those are my three deal breakers so like i respect the hell out of the time out of all the guys that work with us and the biggest advantage, like, was in the beginning, my brother would bang on the door and we still lived in my parents' house. He'd be like, Elvis, it's go time. All his friends called me Elvis because I had the hair back like my dad's. I used to get this weird little, and the hair was perfect, man. Yeah. And you can only get so much out of LA looks, all right? You know, it wasn't going to hold <laughs> Max 10, Volume 10, the green or the blue one, dude. It wasn't forever. Yeah, yeah. So, like, we would roll out of the truck. But by the time we got gas, went to get sealer, dude, that process, if you were, like, sixth, seventh in line, could take, like, an hour and a half. Like, so you weren't getting to your first driveway till like 8 30, 9, some days. Like, the tanker would be late. Dude, that's horrible. Yeah. Like, nobody wants to work. Like, I know there's a ton of guys out there <clears throat> still doing it, and I'm not knocking it, dude. We did it for years. But once we got that bulk tank and it gave me the control to get to the yard before everybody else, get everything ready, have everything where it was supposed to be. So that nobody had to think in the field. How many times have you worked for somebody else? And they were like, hey, can you run down to the truck and grab this? And dude, I'm digging through your truck for 20 minutes. I don't find it. I got to be honest with you. I'm so mad right now. I'll leave the job. Because whatever detail you were asking me to do, I tell you what, it's not going to come out the way it was. <clears throat> because my mind's out of the game. I'm so angry 
that I wasted 20 minutes looking for something that's not there. I'm not going to come back and deliver the same work I was going to. So I knew that like, if I could just have everything organized and in place to where you don't know the difference between Monday through Sunday, April to November, you have everything you need to succeed. That right there will give your guys confidence alone to take on anything. When they know they have everything ready to go, when they show up and it's go time, we get fuel and we're on that first job. Set some, if we're working local, we're on that first driveway, 7.15, 7.30, we can be there. Dude, that's a huge advantage. Like we try to do three driveways an hour and have 10 done by noon, regardless of drive time and size. And we can't always do it. But that's that's the plan. If we can average three driveways an hour, 10 done by noon, then we've got that five to eight left from 12 on. We average five to six hour days in the field. Now, obviously, my brother works longer. I work longer. But by the time the guys show up at seven, we only average five, six days. So if we can stay doing that, dude, it almost gives them an extra day of the week because of the amount of time they're back home so they can be with their family, work on their projects. So, like, honestly, our culture kind of created itself based on you just went off of what you've seen. We created a really good environment where like, dude, our guys don't stress. Like, yes, we're in stressful environments, but they know what they're doing. So like you were, if you're a new employee, like we've got a guy, uh, he's a nephew. I think I got that right. He's a nephew of a guy that's been with us forever. And this will be his third, third year. He's so far ahead of any third year employee in the country that, because he's working with us. He's a great, he's a great kid. He's, he's so far beyond his years yeah. uh, mentally and with his awareness. Like, dude, I was a mess in my early 20s. Like, trust me, I won't, I won't go down that road. I won't, I won't go into those stories. I still got an image I got to uphold here yeah. for the public. But believe me, my late teens, early 20s, dude, not the person you're seeing today. But, like, he's got it together. And because we create this environment that feels like a sports team, listen, we're all in it to win it. If you work hard and give 120% and I give 120%, dude, you're getting home an hour earlier hour and a half, two hours earlier. So everybody buys into this. If we work together as a team, we're all going to work less and we're going to go home sooner. And and and, and that's kind of it. My brother is is a great owner. Um, I don't think I would be a good owner because I, I, I think I'm so detail oriented. I think the smallest slip up as an owner and I knew it was costing me money. I, I, I think I'd be too hard, but he's great. He doesn't yell at anybody. He doesn't scream at anybody. He's there bright and early every morning. So like you're either going to get in a truck with him He's great to work with. If you're going to get in a truck with me. I'm great to work with. And we all mesh so well together that, again, the culture, it, like, yes, I knew what I, the environment I wanted to create. I never thought it would get to this level to where it's like, dude, we just come in and it's like hanging out with your friends. That's it. Like, we bust each other's balls. I mean, you're working with a bunch of guys, but like, everybody pulls their weight because when you look to the guy, like there's times, dude, I'm gassed. I got nothing left. Like we're on a parking lot. We've already done 150 some odd driveways. This is the fourth, fifth parking lot of the week. I'm gassed. I'm sweeping dirt. I got nothing left. But when I look to the left and I see four or five, five other guys giving it their all. And then what I always do, there's a mental trick I do. I always look at what we've already accomplished. And I'm like, well, dude, we got this lot half finished, half crack filled. Like what's finishing the other half? Like we can do this. So like, I got to lie to myself sometimes. And I'm like, dude, you got this. And I keep going because I feed off their energy. So like, dude, we, we couldn't have a better group of guys. And honestly, organization, I think helped a lot in process helped a lot. It's, it's no different. I'm not trying to put this on anything, but like, you know, it's no different, you know, pet owners who created a really good environment and from a pet from start and it, he becomes a great dog and you can take that same dog and put him with two other people and that dog becomes a disaster he becomes a tyrant so like you gotta have processes that allow people to develop and grow but dude 90 percent of it i if, if you brought somebody in with us today and me and my brother and other guys never spoke a word they would know what's expected of them mm -hmm. because of what they see around them and that's it every and it starts it starts at the top it starts at the top and I'll say it's the biggest advantage. My brother's still being involved in the company in me being involved. Cause I, you know, obviously he doesn't have to seal driveways anymore, but he loves it. The day he decides a, hey, I'm not going to work in the field anymore, more power to him. But when we had, when we got rid of that 88 F three fifty and got our first cab over, it was an automatic was when I was good enough to take over that truck with one other guy. And he would do estimates seven days a week. And he'd be there'd be mornings. He'd be like, dude, dad, I, I can't do it. He goes, you got to let me in that truck. He goes, you got to do estimates. He goes, I, he goes, I'm losing my freaking mind because dude, it's brutal. We get a lot of estimates. It's not fun. Nobody wants to do them. Some of the guys help out periodically, but even they, dude, it's brutal. 
No, because we're not going out to look at two driveways. If, if you come in on a Saturday and you're doing estimates, he may hand you a sheet that has 75 driveways on it. Yeah. And do your best. You get through what you can get through. So, like, it's not fun doing estimates in our world. But, yeah, man, it, it's it's one of those things. It's as simple as you have to be the person you expect them to be. They're not going to do anything they don't see you doing. And it's not just the physical. You don't have to be alongside them working. But, like, you have to literally be, like, you don't want to be screamed at, so don't scream at them. Like you want to know the guy working alongside you is here for the right reasons. So, so show them that work, work alongside him here and there and show them why you do things the way you do, because I'm trying to make your life easier. I've never once asked somebody to do something that I've never done. And I would never ask you to do something that wasn't the absolute easiest way for you to one, not get hurt and two, not work as hard as you have to. And three, to get the best possible outcome by doing the least amount of work. Like that's what we do. That's all we've done. So again, I mean, I hope, I think that answered the culture question. Oh, man, did it ever. Like, yeah, like that's, that's what we've done. Your guys are going to do what they see you doing and they're going to say the things they hear you saying. And like our new guy, I'll hear him talk to customers and I'll be like, Jesus Christ, he sounds like me because he's heard me say it a thousand times, 2000 times. He's seen me do it and at times. I know, I know I got my point across because at times he'll go to do something before I say anything. He goes, He's like, Adam, I already hear you in my head, man. Yeah. He goes, I get it. He goes, I can already hear what you're saying. He goes, I got you with me, man. He goes, I'm on it. Like, it's it's funny because, dude, we can honestly go out there and not talk for like weeks on end. And like the jobs are still the same. Like it's just, but that takes, it takes years to develop. You know, it's no different than any sports team where they hold on to their veterans. They bring in enough new talent and, and you know, they, that culture, you buy right into it. You know, it's hard. It's hard not to, um, because again, we're, we're good people to work with, you know, not a monster. Yeah. I, I've only yelled at a few people and that's usually because I'm just, <laughs> it's usually not them. Usually some homeowner burned me out, but yeah, it's, it's, we can, we got a great, a great group of guys and I can picture doing what we've done with, without them. That's, that's for sure. That's I awesome. mean, they're, they're, a, they're a huge part. If, if you, if you treat your guys right, you don't have to worry about what they're doing for your customers. It's, it's an automatic. I know everybody focuses on the customer always being right and the customer, the customer, the customer, the customer. And that's great and all that is, but that's a byproduct of treating your guys right first. And then you don't, you don't have to worry about it. So they'll take care of your customers. I, I have no problem sending any two of our guys out to do any 18 driveways without me, without my brother with, and I know they're, they're going to, cause they know, they know what's expected. They know what to do. And not only that, we've got, they take pride in what they do. So yeah, it, it's, but again, it takes, it takes time, but you know, it's, uh, and we've, you know, it hasn't always been perfect. We've let guys go. We've had guys that were our friends that we let go because you put yourself above the team and your personality was toxic and you were frustrating other people. And I don't care how talented you are. Believe me, we've let some talented people go. Yeah. Un unbelievably talented people go. It's not worth it. Yeah. If, if you're making it not a place where other people want to come in, then we don't have time for it. I don't want to, I'm not going to tolerate it. And I don't expect these guys to, and, and you're out the door. And like, those things are going to happen at some point in time. Every single one of you is going to have to make the tough decision that you're probably going to have to let go of somebody. You can't picture your company running without, but you will survive. You'll get through it. And you're going to have to do it because if you don't get rid of that one person, you're going to lose two others. And I can guarantee you that. And I guarantee you one of those two others can step up and fill that guy's shoes. No question. Without a doubt. So it's like, but you got it. That's everything, man. Your people got to be happy. You got to create an environment because dude, it's a long season when you're out there in that sun, you're out there in them parking lots, dude, it beats down on it. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic stuff. <laughs> I, I need you to grade my responses. Can you hold up like a flash card? Yeah. Like a, a it's wonder, wonder so ten? good. Give me zeros, man. It'll throw me off. It's so good. The Like I, I could jam with you like all day. I really could. I'm just, you're just the best. Honey, okay. There's, come there's Canada. yeah, come on to Canada. Um, there's something you just said. And I'm really, really glad you, you talked about it. Cause I, I don't think you talk about it enough, but you just, you kind of slid it in there right in the middle of that answer. Like, well, before I tell you what it is, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you something. I don't know if you know this or how, how well you know this, but what you guys do at prestige for, as far as efficiency of driveways is literally known around North America. So what I mean by that is you, I'm not keeping a list, Adam, but like, you don't want to know how many people have mentioned 
prestige seal coating and how fast you guys do driveways. So the thing you slid in there was like, yeah, we do three driveways an hour, like 20 minute driveways. Like that melts people's brains. Yes, this is a striping podcast, but like that is ridiculously fast. And I get it. It's 20 years and it's the consistency of guys and, and you know, everything you just talked about the culture and stuff. But like, can you, <laughs> you have melted people's brains with how fast you guys do this. Can you like give th- two, three, I don't even care. Like, th- like what's the secret sauce here? Don't say 20 years experience because that's the real answer. And obviously that's just going to take time. And some people are like, ah, I'm impatient. Just tell me how Adam does it now. Like, what are you guys doing to get it so dialed in where you, I know for a fact you have this down to the minute. Like you can probably look at driveways now and say, I know exactly how long that's going to take me to the minute. How do you do that? What are three things guys can do right now to do that? Oh, geez. So honestly, one, you got to be honest with yourself. You you have to look at everything around you. If it frustrates you, it frustrates your guys. And I don't care. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's the location of the shovel on the truck. I don't care. There's something in your process from A to B that frustrates you or your guys you gotta you gotta listen to them you are doing the same thing every single day so like a simple thing like say say i'm running late to work but i have to have a bowl of cereal every morning so we know the milk's in the fridge we know where the spoon is we know where the bowl is we know where the cereal is but all right but the cereal's in a cabinet 10 feet away from the fridge all right so i can bring that a little closer I, I, can, I can I can get the bowl to the front of the cabinet. Maybe I even take my spoon out the night before. You got to keep that's like that's the mindset. You have to find the fastest way to do to do everything. You got to tweak your truck to work. And the way we have our trucks tweaked may not work for you. Yeah. But like one of the big things I wanted, and not only because you can get hurt, I didn't want anybody to have to get up on our trucks ever. Okay. So like when you're doing driveways. Nobody has to jump up on the bed. Everything is attainable from the floor. I'm, I'm short. That was my main reason for it. I'm the shortest guy going. Yeah. I have short little T-Rex arms. Yeah. Dude, when I lean over the side of that bed, I can't reach a whole lot. Yeah. So like everything we have on the trucks is attainable from the ground. Whether you walk around, it's everything's right there. So like it's that's kind of the thought process is like, because dude, I've seen it. I've seen it and I know with the trailer units, it's tougher. You got a lot less space in this, that I know some guys working out of the back of their trucks, but like, dude, if I got to if you ask me to edge a driveway, I got to lean over the side and to get that weed whacker out. I got to move a five gallon bucket of sand or a thing of crack fill. Bro, you already lost me. I'm done. Like I, I'm done. I don't want to do it. So like, so like that's, that's part of it is you got to get your equipment as organized as possible for your process for, for what you do. That's honestly, That's a big, that's a big part of it. Um, A lot of it also is, geez, I mean, you really got to find a way to shave. Dude, start timing yourself. I know it sounds silly. I love it. No, I love that. Yeah, start because you're going to start somewhere. And honestly, the only reason I really, the only reason I do some of the time shots is a lot of guys were like, dude, there's no way. Like I, I get these comments and I would delete them. I block them, whatever. I just don't have the time for it. And they're like, dude, it's not possible. Like you can't be doing them that fast. I'm like, I, I don't know what to tell you, man. Like that's, that's how fast we're doing them. Yeah. And then other people were like, oh, your photos are Photoshop. So I started doing videos. I'm like, dude, I can barely get on a Zoom call without my wife's help. I can assure you, <laughs> dude, I'm not trying to add any more time to my day. Like I take the photo, however it comes out, it goes on the internet. Like that's, that's it. And people are like, oh, the glare isn't real. And I'm like, well, it's because we move so fast. The top of the driveway is as wet as the bottom of the driveway. That's that's what you're seeing. So like time yourself because you may think you're making progress. And a lot of everybody says, you know, I've been doing this 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Okay, but years is just a way to measure time. It doesn't necessarily measure evolution. It, does, it doesn't. So like I know guys that have been doing it 20 years. They haven't changed their process one time. Yeah. One time. They're slow as a snail out here. And there's nothing wrong with that. The spoon is still 20 feet away from the cereal. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, the milk's all the way to the back of the fridge, blocked by the orange juice. The cereal's 20 feet out. The spoon's not even where that's supposed to go. Your your drawer's unorganized. Like, it's that's the the thing. And so, like, time yourself. Because, dude, it doesn't lie. 
Time doesn't lie. Now, yes, there's variables, textures in a driveway, dirt, and this and that. But if you start timing yourself, you can actually see your progress. And I promise you, it will encourage your guys to work harder because it's fun to say. It's fun to be like, yo, dude, this used to take us 30 minutes. But look now, we're on the same exact kind of driveway we were on two weeks ago. Now we're down to 27 minutes. And when you start looking at things from a time perspective, your brain will automatically open up to weird avenues, man, to where you're like, Hey, what if we change this? This may save, dude, I don't care. If it saves 30 seconds, but you do the same thing 10 times a day, yep. do the math. Now we're talking minutes. Okay, but now extend that over the course of the season. Now we're talking hours. And if you can do X amount of driveways in that amount of time, you just added a lot of driveways to your schedule. So again, we I won't say years, but you know, but we've been perfecting that process over and over and over again. And a lot of it is just, dude, if you if you look at your trucks where I got a lot of inspiration from, uh, I've always loved fire trucks, police trucks, all that shit. It's a good example, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, because if you think about it, these are men that literally get a call in the middle of the night, don't even know what they're heading into. But they know when they go to that firehouse, their gear is perfectly set up for them to be able to get it on as fast as possible, no headaches. Dude, there's also a lot of guys, if you go into a firehouse for new employees, all the tools go on the wall. Dude, they have a tape outline of every exact tool. It's the only spot it goes. It does not go anywhere else. Where you got it from, put it back. Because when I'm in an emergency scenario and I got to run, because maybe I, I nicked the sidewalk or a stone jumped and it flicked a little seal on the door, I need that water bottle right where I know it is. So without thinking, I go ding, ding. So like you got to set your trucks up as if it's like go time. Like we're our, our equipment is ready to go 24 seven. You know, sometimes I got a pump sealer, but it's uh, if we get a call for a 500,000 square foot parking lot, they want to start in two hours, dude, we can be there ready to go because everything has a home. Everything's ready to go. And I know, I know police officers call their shotguns cruiser ready yeah. when they're fully loaded and they got one, they got one in ready to go and all they got to do, but that's how your operation has to be. Be cruiser ready, man. Be ready to go. So that if an opportunity presents itself, You've put yourself in the best possible foot forward to go and do that. Because I promise you, the more ready you are to be, dude, those jobs come in and you're like, oh, my God, it's a good thing. We had this. We did this. Like, let's let's go. But you have to put yourself in that position. You have to be prepared. And, uh, you know, and honestly, training, training. The big thing I think is a lot of people don't realize your top guys can't get any better. You're going to reach a limit to where is I, I hit my limit probably I'd say six years ago. I couldn't do a whole lot better in the field than I was already doing. But what I could do was work on myself outside of the field. I could be in the best shape possible, both mentally and physically before the season starts, because if I'm personally prepared, I'm a much nicer person to be around, obviously. I like myself more, which makes me more confident. And I can go out there and I can be a better leader. And that example will trickle down to your guys to want to be better. But stop making your young, new guys do all the shit work. Dude, you're going to burn them out. When we bring in a new guy, dude, I want him finishing driveways within the first week. I don't care. Let's get him out there. I have a photo of everybody that's ever worked with us. And I have their first photo of the first driveway they finished because it's just fun for me. And we, it's, it, we'll mess with the guys too because it'll be three, four years later. We'll be like, oh, dude, that was your first driveway. And they're like, yeah, yeah, I know, man, I get it. But no, get get your young guys up and running, man. Give them big responsibility. Don't, don't give them a lot of guys paving and seal coating. They get a new guy. What do they do? They put them on sweeping dirt 24-7. Doing all the stuff that burns you out physically. But if he's burned out physically – He's mentally and emotionally exhausted as well. Sure. So he's not going to be able to absorb all that new information. Dude, get him right up there. You know, obviously start him out cutting in the grass if it's a driveway, then, then a sidewalk. But, dude, get him right up by that house. It's the only way he's going to learn. Dude, he's going to make mistakes. And we've all made mistakes. I still make mistakes. They're just obviously much less than, and you know, than the average person. But, like, that, that would be my big thing, man. Get your equipment and trucks organized that work best for you. Start timing your guys. If you're serious about getting faster, there's only one way to do it. Dude, how do we know who's the best athlete when the Olympics come around? Everything's time. Everything is time. We're not just out there like, 
Ah, we think he did better. No, dude. Like, they timed it. Like, it comes down to split seconds, hundreds of a second. Start timing yourself so you can really see. And honestly, it'll also help you bid better. But I know that's a completely different, you know, story. But you got you got to know your times, how, how clear you can clear a lot, this and that. But, yeah, time your guys because, dude, that'll tell you. And then, you know, work on work on yourself in the off season. The I don't care what it is. Everything applies to – all parts of life be as best as you can be in all parts of life because it'll be and, and and get your new guys get your new guys up and running man don't don't stick them on crap detail yeah. dude i still sweep the majority of the dirt and, and scrape the worms on our truck because i'm so conditioned to it dude i i can scrape i can sweep dirt from here to canada dude yeah. <laughs> with very few breaks in between yeah. because i'm just conditioned to it i've got about 15 different ways i can hold a broom for so when one muscle burns out i can go to another like dude it, it's it's just but yeah, that, that would be my thing. A lot of a lot of people's downfalls, they're just not organized. They're not ready to succeed in the in the field. You gotta get your equipment, you gotta get your equipment to work for you. Um, find yourself so you can actually visibly see it. Cause I promise you, when your guys start to see they're getting better, they'll be excited and they'll want to keep improving. And yeah. if you're doing things right, if you only assign them 15 driveways, what's it to you if it takes eight hours? Tell them if they get it done in six, there's a little incentive for them. Yeah, they can go home that two hours, dude. They're fresh now. They're fresh. Pay them the same damn amount. Tell them they're good to go. Send them home. You know, like like that's like that's the thing. Like, dude, we do fifteen to eighteen, and it's usually five six hour days. Dude, we could do twenty to twenty four. Yeah. We're gonna burn out. We could we could do yeah, it. Yeah, because that's a high like, octane five to six hours for you guys. Yes, yes, it's it's high. It's high. It's yes. There's there's no there's no downtime. We don't in my truck. We don't stop for lunch. The guys, the two guys with me, don't want to. We eat while we're driving in between jobs. Yeah. And dude, when we roll up, dude, it's it's like it's like swap, man. I'm telling you, when we roll up on a driveway, bro, those guys are out of the truck. There's times I don't even have it fully in park. Bro, the door flings open. They're out. Dude, I don't even have the bill ring. I don't even have the bill or the thing punched in the GPS to the next one. I'm jumping out to put the bill in the mailbox. Bro, he's already got half the driveway edge. I The first thing I do is I'm eyeing for dirt. If it doesn't need it, it doesn't need it. But, like, yeah, you'll, you'll get it with time if you're going to stick with it. But it does. You got to retain at least one or two good guys to really buy into your program and to learn that process because it makes it that much easier um, to bring in new guys. Yeah. Because I may say something and explain something to you, but I explain it in a way he didn't really get it. But then the guy that's been with me for 15 years explains it to him and he goes, Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. So like the more talent you can keep around, if it's healthy for your organization, keep it around because it just makes training that much better because they don't have to hear it from you. Because you don't have to be there. He's hurt. You you've trained him. He can train him, and it's that trickle down kind of hierarchy type thing, and and that works. It makes everybody's life easier. And before you know it, like I have no doubt, our two year guy could easily be a foreman on most people's crews. Yeah. Because he's seen that much volume. He's seen more volume than the average company is going to see in maybe five years or six years, depending on what we're looking at. And he's got it all: commercial, residential. He's striping. Like he picked up things faster than me because we're in a better spot there's no bullshit like everything we're telling you dude is the 100 percent spot on wd-40 fastest like critique 4.0 version of info that we can give you but yeah man i, I think i gave you three i hope no you you did i'm just i'm laughing about the last thing the wd-40 thing oh, that's good yeah you, you, you gotta get there you and i just said i think you said this on the phone just like a couple days ago like you can't scale a person right so once you get you know, yourself, or once you're at that level where you're very efficient, you can't scale yourself. And what I see in striping, and I know it's the same in your guys' industry with, 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 with seal coating is you see stripers online who are like, uh, nobody can do it as good as me. It's so frustrating. Can't find good employees, blah, blah, blah. But they're, they're so focused on like holding them to the standard that they're at. And they're not thinking about everything you just said, which is training, developing and getting them in the field. Yeah. The guys who are complaining that they can't find anybody and that no one's as good as them are pushing the brooms, like you say, 12 yeah. hours a day. Well, no wonder they're not getting better. Why would they get, you know, there's only, yeah. that's, oh, so good. Yeah, yeah. Adam, Adam. My, uh, yeah, my, my goal is always like, dude, and I know people don't want to train guys for, for different reasons. There's always that fear of they're going to leave and become your competition. Hey, if that's a choice, we've had it happen. You know, uh, we had a guy, one of my brother's good buddies said, uh, you know, he wanted to give it a shot himself and there was no, 
hard feelings over it. And he, he didn't, I think he lasted maybe two years and called it quits because you only really see the work side. Business of it. is hard. Yeah. You, you know, yeah, yeah. The business side of it, there's, there's a lot more to it. And it, yeah. it takes a team. It takes a team yeah. to run a successful business. It really, it really does. So like we make it look so easy that you think you're just going to go out there and a the phone's going to ring, but like, Dude, don't don't not train your guys out of fear. If you're fearful that he's going to become your competition, so you're not gonna you're not gonna put any of yourself. In, what's the point of having him? What's the point of having him? Bigger. Dude, I want every single person to walk through that door to be better than me, because it's only gonna make my life easier. And hey, if you do decide to leave, I know as well as anybody else, because dude, we've been doing this a long time. We know a lot of people who, who are in the industry. And dude, the odds of you getting out of that first one to five years, it's unlikely. Dude, the turnover rate in this industry, the average, even for any small business, 80% fail within five years. Yeah. The turnover rate out here, especially with everything that went on with COVID, me and my brother were talking. We said, dude, we're going to see more equipment for sale than you're ever going to see before because we always track. I'm always looking for a good deal. Of course. You know? yeah, yeah. I, love, I love used equipment because we know the ins and outs. I, mean, I can get anything up and running in no time at all and then save 60%, 70% of costs. So it's like yeah. – but yeah, it, it's a lot of people got out. So it's like, dude, don't be fearful. Train train your guys to be better than you. If you're good That's at training, then if they leave, you you could just train another one because you already have proof. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not it's a hard dude. If we brought anybody in, dude, we'll we could get you up and running. In, in no in no time. Like honestly, I'll even take a guy off another company that's been doing it three, four, five years. Do you come, you come here for a week, two weeks, bro, we'll, we'll blow your mind. We'll send you back home. <laughs> you'd read through, yeah. you'd read through your whole operation, but yeah, it's just, I don't know. You got it. You got, there's a lot of people that just are happy with where they're at. Dude, that's fine. Yeah. That's perfectly fine. Yeah. But like, we've never, we've always wanted to get better. And you know, I know you're the same way. You're not, you're never settling. And it doesn't mean that we're big misconceptions. People think we're not happy or we're not content. Dude, I'm ecstatic where I'm at. Yeah. But I know I'm capable of more. So why wouldn't I go after it? Man, operationally, you guys are just setting the bar. Like, you know, my company's grown so fast, but that comes with a lot of chaos. A lot of like the, yeah. the cereal is apart from the spoon right now. Put it that way. Like yeah. we got a lot of like reorganization in the cupboards to do. And like when I yeah, just, I, I, I applaud you, man, you, you've taken on, I mean, I know with conversations, you've taken on a lot more than what Manny would in the first few years, man. And it takes, let's be honest, it takes balls to do it. it it's, I, I know the financial end of it vicariously through my brother and seeing yeah. what he went through early on. Yeah. And I, I don't wish that on anybody because it's not, it's not easy. You know, his big thing, he always had a saying was he felt like he was steering the boat and everybody on board was benefiting but, but he wasn't because that's how it feels in the first year. Cause you've got money going 42 different directions. Everybody else is along for the ride. My, my check comes. So yeah. it's, uh, well, it's, I'm in it for the long, I'm in it for the long haul. I'm playing the long. No, game, and that's so. how you have to be. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, you're good, yeah. dude, bro. You got yourself yeah. in a spot. Dude. Thanks. You're fine. You're good. You're good too. I appreciate you, man. Where obviously, like we just said the company name 500 times. So where do people find you? Oh, that's one thing I wanted to mention too. I didn't write it down. I'm glad I just remembered. Like I, well, I don't want to throw you under the bus here, but I know you're super good for this. Um, like you've been like helping guys for literally years all across the country who just send you guys messages, like ask you questions. I know you're good for that um, within reason. Obviously, your time is precious. But uh, um, is it fair to say that if anyone has a question, they can reach out to you? And if so, where do they find you? Yeah, you you can message me on the on the Prestige page. Um, the Instagram is where I get a lot of it. Guys, guys do the Facebook too. Uh, the Facebook messages is weird. I, sometimes the I don't get the notification for for days on end. But yeah, I've I've got no problem. Like again, I've always said before. Like there's there's times like I won't I won't help every, everybody, but it depends on the question. And I, I can't get depends on where you're located. There there's a few variables in there, but I've never turned anybody away. I've never I've never left anybody with just a no, dude, can't do it. <laughs> like I can always give you like any sort of advice that's going to steer you a little better. Cause I mean, in all reality, I've got, the thing is when I give you a piece of advice, like the advice I'm giving you today, it's, it's the final version of it. So like, if you asked me that same question 15 years ago, the answer would be different. Yeah. 10 years ago, the answer would be different and so on. So like in a part of me, like I, I love helping guys that are in it for the right reasons um, that are just trying to be, be better. Um, but you know, it's, there's always that catch 22. It's like when you give people advice, I don't think they fully understand Every piece of advice I'm giving you, dude, that's that's come off my body. That's come off thousands of thousands of hours. That's come off of us really trying to be better every single day, not just existing. So there's always that weird, like, 
I can give you advice, but I'm probably, and you will never know it, but maybe I don't go fully in as, as far as I, as I could on some topics, but yeah, man, I mean, if it's something, a lot of these guys' questions are pretty simple, straightforward stuff. Some of the guys ask some little more, uh, detailed stuff. A lot of it is, is honestly, uh, equipment, this equipment, that, uh, materials, a lot of guys, I think there's a lot of misconception. I think about materials, like, I you know, I don't know. I know everybody's holds true on their number, 30%, 40%. But in my mind, with water ratios, dude, if you have an unworkable sealer that you can't hand apply and it's at a specific percentage, then you got to find another manufacturer. Like, I'm, I'm just telling you the God's honest truth. If, I, if I've got a material that I've had it mixed to your exact specs, but I can't use it out in the field, well, what good is it? What good is it? But some of these sealers you can't add. You add an extra five gallons of water and it breaks the emulsion. I'm guessing you get a lot of questions like that, eh? Yeah. You get a lot. Yeah, we get a lot yeah. of material because everybody everybody wants the finished look yep. of our driveways and videos. And dude, it's I'm not saying we're amazing, but I'm gonna tell you right now, it's unrealistic for most for, for many different reasons. Because a lot of it it comes down to speed. And and the clearest way I can say it is if you've ever seen a painter paint on the sunny side of a house and he's hand applying and it still comes out really good. He's probably got some additive in there to extend the drying time, but like you really got to know what you're doing, dude. When we're on driveways and the surface temps are 150 to 160 degrees, that sealer's still drying under our feet. We're just that fast and efficient. And you're, you're probably not going to get there and you might never get there. Dude, that's fine. It, it like, yep. it just, but yeah, that's, that's the main questions people have is how do our driveways, come out the way they do and dude it's it's speed but that speed was built responsibly over a long period of time dude we weren't knocking out driveways in five six seven minutes 10 years ago but like we gradually built will towards that but yeah i got I'll, I'll help i'll help the right people i always i always have you know if you're in it for the right reasons and you're just an honest dude and and, and i you know I, I look at the same thing i look at how you keep your equipment i check your workout i kind of look I'll even look at your reviews before I help you because I want to make sure you're not like this horrible person. I'm not going to help a guy who's in this industry for the wrong reasons yeah. become more credible. I'm just not going to do it because I know everything I've put into this industry. Dude, I've killed myself out here. And I've killed myself out here for a long time to try to do it better than anybody's ever done it, to try to get to as many customers as, as we can and to make them happy. And we've done that, dude. It's it's a lot of work. So again, any piece of advice I give you, dude, it's fully refined. And I, I touch base on the WD-40. I don't know if a lot of people know it, but that's it's water displacement formula 40 because the first 39 ways fail. It didn't accomplish what they were trying to do. So if I give you a piece of advice, it's built upon us failing year after year after year after year that specific area and we kept changing it changing it changing it so i can give you an advice no matter how small it is no matter how small a topic it could put you five six years ahead of where you would have been if you tried to figure it out on your own or you might have never figured it out on your own but yeah man i'm i'm always here i'm here for the right guys i've never turned anybody away i've uh, i've had guys that i've been talking to over the course of three years yeah four years yeah. i think i made the instagram page in 2018 i had to delete most of the comments because Instagram and Facebook, when they merged, all my Instagram messages went to the Facebook page. And dude, I was getting messages from homeowners being like, hey, when you, I couldn't find anything. Yeah. And so I literally, when I deleted them off Facebook, I guess it was shared at the time. It deleted them on Instagram too. I'm like, what, what are we doing here? <laughs> so like, dude, I would, but I lost some good conversations with some good people that we picked back up where we left off. But yeah, yeah. there was some early years, some fun stuff in there. And that was always fun to scroll back to see where people were three, four years ago, where they're at now. But uh, yeah, man, I mean, that's, that's kind of what this industry is about is uh, the right people helping the right people. I mean, you know, it, it only makes things better. And honestly, for the industry as a whole, with with everything, dude, COVID destroyed a lot of good businesses. A lot of a lot of people went under that. If it weren't for COVID, they would have been fine. Because if you're in your earlier years, let's face it, 95% of your sales is based on price and not necessarily volume. Because you don't know a whole lot just yet. So like you got the job probably because you were eight hundred, eight thousand cheaper than the next bid. You got the job. There's nothing wrong with that, dude. That's how everybody starts. But here's the thing. Your profit margins can be similar because your overhead's not as high. So, like, it's not a big deal, but, like, dude, between fuel costs and sealer costs, if you were new to the industry, dude, you probably didn't survive. And it's unfortunate because some of those guys probably would have been really good if they could have got past that year five, six, seven. Yeah. 
And, you know, but again, I don't know if there isn't people helping, I don't know where this industry will be yeah. down the road because there's not an influx of younger talent. Nobody really wants to do, if you're not part of a generational company that's already established, these kids that are coming up to, they, you know, they want to be YouTube, TikTok stars. They don't want to seal coat and pave. Yeah. So I, I think you're going to have less influx of new companies coming in. And I, I think for the guys that, I mean, we work for a ton of guys that subcontract on national levels. We get calls from all over the place. People, <laughs> they're just like, can you do this job? And we're like, yeah, but like, dude, you're going to run out of 20, 30 years. I don't know what's going to be out there for a contractor market. Yeah. So I really don't. So like, I, I think the right people sharing the right information, you know, you can really make a difference for somebody's company. You know, I, I, those guys weren't out there. I was on dial up on pave pro at 10, 11 o'clock at night in my parents' house because that was when the internet wasn't as busy. So like you could actually get on yeah. and pay pro back then. It was just, it was forums like chat rooms. Yeah. Dude, I didn't even know half the stuff I was reading. It was so far beyond where I was, but I read all of it. Yeah. I read all of it. I read and studied this industry uh, for a very long time. You know, and it's, you have to, you have to. I studied our competition. I, dude, uh, I looked at this industry like a chess game. Dude, I don't play chess, but in real life, in real life I can. But yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, man. I'm always here. Prestige, Seal Coding, LLC. Sweet. Instagram is going to be your best bet. Yes, sir. Sweet, yeah, man. man, thank you for your time. Thank you for coming on. I, I I, just, I ran out of paper and room to write like all the good stuff you got there. So thank you very much, man. You're a rock yeah, star. Man. Thanks for having me, man.